Hey guys, Coach Sue here with Physique Development, and in this video, I'm gonna be going over some questions about peak week. It's definitely something that's very confusing if you don't know the sport, and even if you do know the sport, there's definitely some things that you might learn here. So um, I did ask the question on my Instagram, so I'll make sure that they pop up here as I ask the question of what your guys' questions are. So one of them was what is peak week? And one thing here is that it is called peak week and not magic week. And I'll go into that a little bit later, but peak week is when you are truly peaking your physique for stage. So when it comes to any sport that you're looking at, you do want to get to a point that you peak. Um, I'll compare this a lot of times to a marathon because I think it's a little bit easier than bodybuilding to understand. So when it comes to a marathon, you don't run 20 six miles until you run your marathon every day. Um, you do different tempos, different lengths of run to prepare you for that marathon. And going into the actual marathon the week before, you're not running the longest runs you've ever run. You're not running the 20 mile runs. You are running those shorter runs. You're tapering down to make sure that you are fresh and ready to go for the marathon. So it's the same prospect here that you want to be able to peak your physique that you've worked so hard for. You should already be ready to go going into peak week. Peak week is not magic week, like I said, so it's not the time to lose excess weight, excess fat. Um, it's not the time to like make up for any mistakes that you've already made. It is literally just you peaking your physique. And I'm gonna talk through a few different things that we do there, but some prerequisites for peaking is you must already be stage lean. So like I said, it's not a time to lose excess fat. And I will say that that's a common myth. I'll hear people say like, oh, I don't look that great, but I'm about to go into peak week, so everything will tighten up and I'll be in a good spot. But you should already be stage lean. You've already lost all the fat that you need to lose for stage and you, you need to be lean to be able to peak because some of these processes that you use for peaking won't work on someone that isn't already stage lean. Another prerequisite here is that you already have to know what your macronutrient distribution is, as well as knowing what your daily water intake and sodium intake is, because those are some things that we're going to be manipulating is looking at carbs, sodium, potassium, water, looking at how those combine to be able to peak your physique the absolute best. So another question was, do you start to control sodium this week at all? And yes, you can start to control control it, sodium and water and potassium and carbs. They're all going to work together for a few different things because some terms that I'll define for you that um, I might use throughout this, but that are also gonna be helpful just for your understanding when competitors talk. So some of those terms are going to be flat. So someone might say, I'm flat as a pancake today, or I'm looking very flat, or my muscles are flat. And that's basically going to be where your muscles are not round or full because the muscle tissue is not pushing tightly enough against the muscle. So Full is another one you might say, someone say like, oh, they told me I needed to fill up or I needed to be fuller on stage. Um, that is going to be where your muscles have that rounded appearance and that muscle is pressing against it. So it's going to be two completely different looks. It's not a point of having smaller muscles like the actual muscle tissue. It's just looking like flat and full muscles, kind of like a balloon where it doesn't change the actual size of the balloon when it's completely deflated, but then you can fill it up with air and it have a different shape to it. So it's gonna be that same concept. Another one you might hear is spilled, like either I spilled over, or I spilled on show day, and that's going to be excess subcutaneous water um, present under the skin. So that can blur definition, that can blur lines, that can make someone look like they have fat that they don't on their body. So there is gonna be a difference. And if you are a coach or a competitor that's been it for a long time, you'll know the difference. If you are a competitor, you've been in prep for a long time, you might have a little bit of prep goggles where you're just like, oh my gosh, I'm fat today. But it really could just be that you've spilled over with your um, change of glycogen, with your change of your carbs, of sodium, potassium, water intake, all of that jazz. So um, those are a few different terms that you might hear competitors use when they're talking about peak week or when you're, they're talking about their shape on stage. So um, when it comes to controlling sodium and potassium, sodium and potassium work cohesively together. So a lot of times people hear like, oh, they don't have me drink water. And that is wrong. If your coach is not having you drink water, I guess I shouldn't talk in absolutes, but I highly would suggest still drinking water because it is going to work 
for your benefit. Um, and then that sodium and potassium, there are some people who are like, oh, let me pull back sodium. Let me not have salt on any of my foods, but really you just wanna control your sodium intake. So that's why I said you wanna know your sodium intake going into peak week. Cause you don't wanna go from, oh, I was having roughly this amount and then drastically increase it and then not change your water or potassium or drastically decrease it and not change your water or potassium. So there's all things that you need to be on top of going into peak week. So you can manipulate those things and your coach is gonna have the best answer for you. It's not gonna be a hard and fast rule of you need this much water, this much potassium, this much um, sodium, it's going to be dependent on the person, what their physique needs, because dependent on the division that you're competing in makes a different look that you need. So for example, if I was extremely vascular and you could see my muscles just popping from a mile away and I was just so full that maybe I looked too big for bikini, that could be a problem. I don't want to do that. I want to suit my division that I'm doing. So it's not the same across divisions and it's not the same even within the division per competitor. So another question here was asking um, why increase food and decrease cardio? And this came from me talking on my story about how I was going about my last peak week. So when it comes down to it, again, going back to the marathon example is that you want to taper off. More than anything, the reason you're decreasing cardio is to be able to, one, be able to fill up your musculature. If you're still running yourself into the ground with training or cardio, you could be running through the food that you actually want that food to be able to fill out. It's not always the goal to see new low weigh-ins during peak week, it could be extremely beneficial for you and your physique to see the weight go up because you are filling out your muscles. But it might be something where you see a low weigh-in and it could be good because you could be losing inflammation while still filling up your musculature and that be okay. It is extremely, extremely situational and I cannot say that enough. Um, but when it comes down to that question of increasing food and decreasing cardio, if you're increasing food a means to an end, depending on the person, you can front load, you can back load, you can mid load, you can do an extreme load, you can do all those different things, which I won't get into within this video, um, but they can all be different ways to load your food. Your coach has probably been working for you most of your prep, if not all of your prep, if not into your past improvement season going into prep. They know how your body handles food, and it's something that's not necessarily a guessing game. It's that you have data from the whole prep that you can utilize moving forward as you start to decide how you're going to do things. So if you know someone, whether their digestion or their body just doesn't handle a huge dump of food, you're not going to have this extreme load. You might have more of a gradual load, more of a linear load. It might be completely different and it could be something where you fail and you learn from one peak week to the next or see how you can manipulate something to come a little bit better, a little bit closer to 100% because you're going for 100%. Something that Alex says often and he has to remind me to get me out of my head is you don't want to look stage ready before stage. It's very easy during a long prep, especially during this one that's happening during coronavirus is that um, it, it has been extremely long and it's something that competitors are so hyped to get on stage that you can start to doubt yourself going into peak week and completely undermine everything that you've done because your stress is going to go super high and that can cause your physique to not look as good and so with that you're not looking to be stage ready before stage time so if you are like wow I don't look hundred percent and it's Monday of peak week that's okay because you're not supposed to look 100%. So being able to keep that in mind. Um, so you're really trying to get rid of inflammation. You're trying to get off any cortisol, any stress, um, and make sure that you're lowering that, being able to get into a parasympathetic nervous system, be able to digest your food, fill out your muscles, do what you need to do for your division and what you and your coach decide. So the next one, was about how will training and diet change this week as compared to the rest of your prep. And then someone else asked, what are the key things that are done during peak week in terms of training and nutrition? So when it comes to cardio, it's something that you taper down again to get that inflammation off. Um, and it's something that you don't wanna add in cardio that you've never done before peak week. And you want to pull all hit if possible going into peak week or throughout peak week, again, to get that inflammation down. And then it's also something that you, a lot of people people might think, oh, I'm getting to the end of this. I am, you might also have some more food than you're used to and have some more energy and be like, I'm gonna train till failure. I'm gonna train super hard. But again, you're not wanting to train super duper hard because that can cause excess inflammation. That can cause some of the things that we don't want when you're peaking your physique. You're really trying to get blood into the muscles. You're trying to get that glucose into the musculature. You're trying to get your body moving and accepting of the food. You're not trying to put on any more muscle. You're not 
not going to put on any more muscle in that week. And it's not something where the harder you train, the better you're going to look on stage during peak week. So normally during peak week, how my training changed during peak week is we did some shorter sessions um, and it was really focused on not eliciting failure and not going too hard. Again, just getting blood to my musculature and being able to move my body. And it's something that you might also hear um, competitors say like, oh, I had my last leg day until stage. And they might say that on a Sunday or Monday and legs normally hold the most inflammation, especially dependent on the person. And so having that heavier leg day on a Sunday or a Monday gives your body time to be able to come down for you to be able to peak on stage. So it's even something that, especially for bikini competitors, they'll tell you and figure competitors not to do like excessive squats backstage or anything like that, because that can blur lines. You really want to be able to rest your legs as much as possible to have that definition through your legs. Um, and then it's also something that as far as increasing food, I've kind of already touched on that um, as to why that changed and why training changed. So there's a lot of things that go into peak week. There's a lot of information here, but what you're trying to do during peak week is maximize muscle size and fullness, maximize muscular um, definition and tightness, um, manage vascularity towards what you need for your division and cre create consistency and predictable outcomes. So one other thing that I'll mention before I wrap this up is sometimes you'll hear people say like, oh, I'm not having having vegetables during peak week. And that's going to be one for GI stress to make sure that you're not putting too much stress on your GI. Again, you're controlling as many variables as possible. And it's something that because uh, veggies are used for volume, you're not going to want to have the biggest amount of food volume as you might have during your absolute deficit time of your peak. You might, or of your prep, you might be like, oh, I'm so hungry, so I'm gonna fill it up with vegetables. But we do want that food to digest quickly. We want it to be able to get to the musculature and then be able to go from there. So I hope I summed that up well enough for you guys. If you have more in-depth questions, we can definitely make another video on it. But more than anything, knowing that before you walk on stage, you do not want to be 100%. It's also something that peak week isn't the time to try and lose excess fat or anything like that. All peaking is for is peaking your physique. You are trying to get off inflammation. You're trying to make sure that your muscles are full, making sure that your definition and your vascularity matches your division and making sure that you're going about it and keeping in touch with your coach because it could be ever changing. And that's why sometimes you'll also see people with sending pictures after each meal or being able to see what they look like in the morning at night because the show day lasts either all day or it's over the span of two days and so being able to see how your body changes as it has different amounts of food in it is very important if you look your absolute best after three meals then you're going to want to get three meals in before pre-judging which might mean you got to wake up at three in the morning to get that done now normally not for a bikini competitor but it does happen so there's a lot a lot of intricacies within peak week but those were a lot of generalized things that help you with some depth definitions um, and if you've ever been confused about what the crap peak week is. So thank you guys for watching and I'll talk to you in the next one.